Happy Halloween, guys. Or if you're watching this in May, Happy May 4th, 2000. 20. Now, I'd like to introduce you to Jack the Pumpkin. Jack the Adorable Pumpkin Cake. He is not just a pumpkin cake, he's a pumpkin surprise cake. Which means that there's candies and sprinkles on the inside of this cake. I'm excited for this because Jack is no ordinary pumpkin, he's got a bit of a dark side. So let's get started. Now to create this pumpkin, I'm using two pumpkin spice cakes that I created in a bunt cake pan. I use a bunt cake pan because I figured that it already kind of looks like a pumpkin and it's very easy to turn this into a surprise cake because there's already a hole in the middle. Now I leveled out all of my cakes and depending on the size of pumpkin that you're going to create, you can use all six layers, but I'm only using four of these layers. Now with a cookie cutter, I'm just opening the hole in the middle of the bunt cake so I can fill more candy in it. And then I added a ring of buttercream to my cake board and then placed on my first layer of cake. And I soaked it with some simple syrup and then added my first layer of cream cheese buttercream. Cream cheese buttercream and pumpkin cake go together so well. Then I add my second layer of cake and repeat that process over again. I'm basically building my bunk cake on top of each other. One is upside down and the other one is right side up. And if you can tell, I accidentally put the third layer upside down like an idiot, but that's all right. On goes another layer of simple syrup and then buttercream. Then on goes my last layer. It already looks like a pumpkin, right? See, it's easy. Now I'm gonna give this entire cake a crumb coat and make sure that I get the inside of the cake as well locked in all of the moisture and then I just placed it in the fridge to chill for about a day and a half. Life got in the way, you guys. <laughs> I started this on Tuesday and then I couldn't actually get back to it until Thursday. Then, when I was finally able to get back to it, I started carving. I started carving the top of the cake and then the bottom as well, just to get the shape that I wanted. Very short, very low to the ground. Wide, definitely not tall. I think wide is cute, right? That tall one's not that cute. Now when I was carving away the top and the bottom, I was actually losing all of the texture that came from the bunt pan. And I'm using a paring knife to get all of that texture back. I'm just using all of the grooves that are still on the cake to dictate where all of these slits will go. Then I gave this baby another crumb coat. First I was using my offset spatula, but then it was taken way too long. So I placed on a glove and I just started working the buttercream into all of the grooves. I placed this back into the fridge to chill and then I did some Netflix and chilling. I got caught up watching this show called The Fosters. Have you ever heard of it? It's a teen drama that's about this family and they've got this whole thing going on. So extra. I love it. I'm hooked. I watched like three episodes and then I went back to working on my cake. Now Jack is a very special pumpkin because Jack is not just Jack. He's also Sam. Dun dun dun! This is a two-faced pumpkin! You see, Jack was sitting in the pumpkin patch next to his twin brother Sam, but they were planted too close together, so when they were growing up, the two pumpkins merged into one. They fused together because of uh, agriculture and magic also. Spooky agriculture magic. <laughs> is that just science? Science is pretty spooky too sometimes. Cause Sam never really had alone time, he became very depressed and he turned to drugs. He turned to pesticides. Sarah and I told him to lay off the pesticides, but the addiction was just too overwhelming. We don't even recognize Sam anymore. That's why Sam looks like a dope fiend. To create Sam's face, I took a toothpick and drew out all of his features. His eyes and his large, very wide mouth. Ooh, this boy's got a mouth on him. Then I took my paring knife that I got from Ikea, that's right, and I just carved out all of his features. Now this took me a while because I wasn't actually sure how deep I should carve out all of his features. 
Um, but I think I found like a happy medium. And when I was carving out his mouth, I was actually being very, 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 very gentle. You know, this cake was still really moist. So when I was carving it, a lot of the pieces of the cake just started falling off. So I was just very gentle, handling it with care. Once I was happy with my design, I crumb coated all of his features and then I started to add candy into the middle of the cake. We got chocolate eyeballs, we got some miniature pumpkins, we got worms, we got candy corns, and last but not least, we got sprinkles. I added some cream onto the rim of the hole, and then I placed in a cake just to seal in all of the candies. <laughs> Gave it a crumb coat and then watched three more episodes of The Fosters. I'm on season two, episode seven, I think, where Callie meets her half-sister, it's this whole thing, you guys. I don't know how somebody's life could be so filled with drama. Guys, I don't need chewing gum. This show is so extra. I took my cake out of the fridge and I wanted to make sure that the entire outer surface of this cake was smooth. So I placed on some black gloves and with a little bit of water, I just ran my hands over the surface of the cake to make sure that there were no bumps. It also allows the fondant to stick better to the buttercream. And I rolled down my orange fondant and then placed it on top of my pumpkin. And I rolled out the perfect size because usually when I roll out fondant, it's like way too big. And then I have to cut away so much extra. I'm like as extra as the show. But this time it was just enough. And I smoothed out the bottom as much as I could and then just cut away the small amounts of extra fondant that I had left over. Now let's move on to Sam's face. Now I took some fondant tools and just started to push all the orange fondant into his feature sort of crevices. Just worked it in towards the back of the eye and then moved on to his mouth. Now I'm trying to give this as much texture as possible while working as fast as I can. Now I was really scared that the fondant was gonna crust and I didn't want that. Sorry about my head getting in the way, you guys. I didn't realize that until editing. Look at this guy. Next time, comb your hair, guy. When you're on camera, comb your hair. Oh my gosh, this is a tragedy. I'm really concentrating on the line quality of Sam's face. Jack's face is really simple and I wanted Sam's to look far more complex. So that if you saw them, you would think that they were just two different pumpkins as opposed to just one pumpkin being spun around. Once I was happy with his face, I moved on to the detail all the way around the pumpkin. I used some fondant tools just to make sure I got all of the orange fondant into those pumpkin grooves. And I think I got to this part a little too late because the bottom of the pumpkin had already crusted. So there are a lot of cracks on the bottom of the pumpkin. Um, so it looks pretty good. And then if I put my hand over it, this looks perfect. Amateur, professional, amateur, Professional. Now because the fondant has already crusted, I'm using a ball fondant tool very gently to create some crevices for Jack's eyes. I'm doing this very gently just to make sure that the fondant that's touching the ball tool has time to soften. That way they won't be cracked. Now I rolled out a lighter shade of orange fondant. And using a cookie cutter, I just cut out a circle and then with a larger cookie cutter, I turned that into a happy smiling D. D always makes me smile, guys. I think Ds make everybody smile. I didn't want his eyes to be completely flat, so I took some black fondant, probably about fourth of an inch thick, and with a small cookie cutter, I cut out two circles. I re-rolled the fondant to be about an eighth of an inch thick, and with a large piping tip, I cut out larger circles. I placed the smaller circles underneath the larger ones, and then I just pushed down the sides. That way, the middle of the circles raised and it looks more 3D. I applied all of his features to the pumpkin with a little bit of vodka. And then I use a little bit of white fondant to create some catch lights so his eyes sparkle. It makes him look so adorable. Rolled out some green fondant into a cylinder shape to create the top of the pumpkin. Now I cut the top off with a pair of scissors so it just looks really rough looking. I'm just trying to create like an organic looking shape like a real pumpkin. And I'm using a paring knife to give this like a ribbed texture. There's a lot of texture on the pumpkin top. Once I was happy with it, I attached it to the top of the pumpkin with a little bit of vodka. And I wanted Jack to be a little cuter, 
So I added some curly Q vines. It looks like Superman's hair curl. It's so cute. This side of the pumpkin was super simple compared to the other side. So let's get to Sam. Now for Sam, I cut some light orange fondant to go on the inside of his left eye. And I just used some fondant tools to push it into the socket. Now this isn't his eyeball yet. Now I used my fondant tool to make some space for a smaller piece of black fondant. I'm using the same tool to create some wrinkles and hopefully when this is done it looks like it's infected. I don't know, that's what I want. Once I was finished with that, it was time to paint Sam. Now I wanted to give Sam a dirty wash. You know, I wanted Jack to look very clean, very pristine looking. I wanted Sam to look like he's been living on the street for like two years. So starting with the top of the pumpkin, I applied some vodka with a little bit of black food coloring. I'm just using it to emphasize all of the different textures that we created. And the vodka actually went into all of the different grooves I created with my paring knife so it looked more real. I just worked my way down to the bottom of the pumpkin. Even though Sam looks terrible, he's actually royalty. Sam and Jack are the sons of the king and queen of Pumpkin Land, which makes him a prince. Throughout the land, he's known as the Pumpkin Savior. Because humans come into Pumpkin Land looking for a pumpkin to carve for Halloween. But when they pick up one of Sam's friends, he rolls up next to that friend pulls out a machete and is like, you really want to do this? You see this terrible face? This is going to be the last thing you see if you try to cut into my friend. You see this terrible face? This terrible face has seen some stuff. You want to mess with that? I'm just using red and black food coloring to highlight and shadow different parts of his features. I didn't think his left eye looked gory enough, so I added some more black and red to that as well. This left eye was life, you guys. It looked so cool. I loved what the left eye looked like, so I decided to add some light orange and black into the right eye as well. And then just dirtied it up with some black and red food coloring. Now I did add some blood dripping down his mouth, but I thought that that was too much. So with a cotton ball and some vodka, I just wiped all of that mess away. Pumpkins are done, but I wanted to finish this off with, you probably guessed it, coconut shavings. I dyed my coconut shavings with a little bit of orange, yellow, and brown to make it look like hay from a pumpkin patch. And voila, Jack and Sam, the notorious two-faced pumpkin was done. Actually, no, because when you cut into it and you see all of the candies on the inside, then it's done. You got cake, you got candy, you're gonna raise your blood sugar. If you're diabetic, don't eat this cake. Now, Jack and Sam were the two most requested names in the community tab when I posted this picture after I finished the cake. So thank you and congratulations to everybody who wrote those two names. I loved all of the backstories you created for Jack and Sam. Every time I post another cake in the community tab, make sure you add a backstory because your backstory could end up in this video. Hit that notification button so you can see exactly when those characters go up. I have a whole bunch of Halloween videos in a playlist. I also have three other videos that I created for this holiday season. Pennywise the Dancing Clown, Jasper the Ghost, and Annabelle. There are links for you in the description box also at the end of the video and no, I did not break my arm. This is my costume. Well, part of it anyways. I'm gonna be Eddie from IT. These are gazebos. I love you guys. I will see you very soon.